12 hours, one seat, no brakes. That's the brutal reality of flying an F-16 on a long-haul combat mission. The cockpit is barely bigger than a phone booth. The pilot, strapped in so tight he can't even stretch his legs. The noise, the heat, the constant pressure, it's survival in the sky. Now, picture this. While a bomber crew might enjoy hot meals and even a small onboard toilet, an F-16 pilot has none of that. No kitchen, no space, no comfort. Just a few pockets stuffed with whatever they can carry. So how do they eat? How do they drink? And how do they make it through hours of combat patrols without collapsing from exhaustion? From the outside, the F-16 is all power and speed. A missile with wings. But inside, it's a test of human endurance as much as machine performance. Food, water, and even basic biology become tactical decisions. In this episode, we'll break it down step by step. The snacks pilots rely on, the hydration systems hidden in their gear, the reality of missions that stretch into double-digit hours, and yes, even the unglamorous bathroom solutions. When you hear combat rations, you might picture a soldier with a steaming field meal pack or a submarine crew sitting down to a hot plate. But for an F-16 pilot, food in the cockpit is nothing more than survival fuel. There's no room for trays, utensils, or anything that takes two hands. Every calorie has to be compact, energy dense, and ready to eat in seconds. Because when you're flying at 30,000 feet with a helmet on and gloves strapped tight, you don't have the luxury of dining. So what makes the cut? Energy bars are at the top of the list. Think protein bars, granola bars, or cliff bars. The kind that pack hundreds of calories into a small wrapper. They slide easily into a flight suit pocket and the pilot can rip one of those open with a single hand. It's not about flavor, it's about shoving 250 calories down while keeping one eye on the radar. These snacks deliver steady energy without spiking blood sugar, and they can be eaten piece by piece during quiet moments even between radio calls. One pilot explained it bluntly. I carry three or four bars in my G-suit pocket. If I get a chance, I chew on one. If not, it comes home with me. That's the rhythm. Small bites whenever there's a lull, because mealtime doesn't exist in fighter aviation. And forget about sandwiches or hot meals cockpit is too tight, and greasy or crumbly foods are a nightmare when you're surrounded by sensitive switches and electronics. A single spill could mean sticky controls or even worse. Everything has to be dry, clean, and able to survive being stuffed in a pocket during high-G maneuvers. The contrast with larger aircraft is pretty darn striking. On a B-2 bomber, crews have a cooler, hot meals, and even a makeshift restroom. In an F-16, the pilot survives on snacks more suited for a hiking trail than an airborne war zone. So while the F-16 is tearing through the sky at mock speeds, the pilot is crunching down on jerky or nibbling on a protein bar. Each bite isn't about taste or comfort. It's about keeping blood sugar steady, staying alert, and making sure that your body doesn't give out before the mission is over. Because up there, Food isn't fuel for pleasure, it's fuel for survival. If food is about keeping energy levels steady, hydration is about staying alive. Inside an F-16 cockpit, temperatures can soar. On the ground in the desert, that bubble canopy turns into a greenhouse. Add in high G maneuvers, the body's stress response, and hours of dry oxygen pumping through the mask, and dehydration hits fast. A pilot who isn't drinking enough doesn't feel just thirsty. Reaction time slows, decision-making falters, and in combat, well, that can be fatal. So how do they drink up there? Well, the solution is surprisingly low-tech, but brutally effective. Hydration bladders. Think of a camelback. Basically, a soft plastic water reservoir with a drinking tube. Pilots strap it into their survival vest or tuck it into their G-suit. The tube snakes up under the helmet right to the mouth so the pilot can sip without taking his hands off the controls. 
It's hands-free hydration at Mach 1. Hydration isn't glamorous, it doesn't come in shiny packaging or make for a nice meal photo. But every sip out of that tube keeps an F-16 pilot sharp, steady, and alive in the fight. On paper, an F-16 isn't built for marathon flights. A standard training sortie lasts about an hour and a half, maybe three if you stretch it. That's enough time for dogfight drills, bombing runs, or patrols near home base. But combat, of course, doesn't stick to neat schedules, and with aerial refueling, the limits change completely. With tanker support, an F-16 can stay in the air for 8, 10, or even 12 hours. The jet itself can keep going as long as you keep topping off the tanks. The real limiting factor isn't the machine, it's the human sitting inside. During operations over Iraq and Afghanistan, pilots often flew missions lasting 8 to 10 hours. More recently, NATO air patrols along the borders of Eastern Europe have demanded the same kind of endurance. One well-known example, a combat air patrol over Libya that kept F-16 pilots airborne for a full 10 hours thanks to multiple mid-air refuels. That means hours of constant radio chatter, situational awareness, and the unrelenting noise and vibration of the jet. There's no stepping out to stretch your legs or grabbing a meal in the galley. The only breaks are the ones you can steal in flight, chewing on a protein bar, taking a sip of water, or adjusting the straps in your seat. And here's the catch. The longer the mission, the more planning that goes into what you pack. Extra snacks, more hydration, and without question, more piddle packs. Because staying aloft doesn't just test the jet's endurance, it pushes the pilot's biology to the edge. Okay. Here's the unglamorous truth. The F-16 has no toilet. None. If a pilot is airborne for 10 hours, nature still calls. And there's only one solution. Piddle packs. What's a piddle pack? Well, a piddle pack is basically a heavy-duty plastic bag filled with absorbent gel. When a pilot urinates into it, the gel instantly solidifies the liquid into a leak-proof mass that can be sealed and stowed away. It's quick, it's discreet, and it prevents a cockpit disaster at 30,000 feet. Some packs even come with a funnel attachment to make the process a little less awkward in the tight confines of the seat. There are also simple urine bottles, just plastic containers with secure tops, but most pilots prefer the piddle packs because they're cleaner lighter and easier to handle in turbulence and under G-loads. But what about number two? Technically, there are waste bags designed for that exact purpose, using the same technology. In practice, almost nobody uses them. Fighter pilots carefully plan meals and fiber intake so they won't face that situation mid-mission. Before a long sortie, they make absolutely sure that their body is, let's say, ready for flight. The contrast with the larger aircraft is almost laughable. A B-2 bomber has a small porta potty Tankers have space for a crew lavatory. In an F-16, the pilot handles business right in the seat and keeps flying like nothing even happened. It's a side of aviation that few people ever think about, but it is just as critical as fuel and weapons. Because when you're locked into a cockpit for half a day, bathroom logistics become a tactical issue. Flying in an F-16 for hours on end is less like sitting in a chair and more like being strapped into a machine that never stops shaking. The cockpit is just big enough for one person. Knees almost touch the instrument panels. Shoulders press against the sides and the pilot is locked in by harnesses so tight that shifting more than just a few inches is impossible. For three hours, it's uncomfortable. For ten, it's punishing. So how do they endure? Strategy. Pilots don't eat one big meal mid-flight. That would risk a blood sugar crash and stomach cramps in the middle of combat. Instead, they snack in small bites, a bar here, a handful of trail mix there. Just the steady trickle of fuel keeps the brain sharp without overloading the body. Hydration plays the same role. A sip every 15-20 minutes or so prevents fatigue without flooding the bladder. 
Believe me, it's a balancing act between staying alert and not filling too many piddle packs. Physical stretching is almost impossible, but pilots do find small tricks, flexing toes inside boots, rolling shoulders against the seat, or tightening and releasing leg muscles. It's not enough to prevent stiffness, but it does help with circulation during the long missions. The bigger challenge isn't physical, though, it's mental. Hours of constant vigilance, the roar of the engine, and the awareness that one mistake could be fatal wears down even the toughest pilot. That's why survival in the cockpit comes down to discipline. Rationing snacks, pacing your water intake, controlling your breathing, and keeping the mind locked in on the mission. It's not glamorous, it's not comfortable, but in the cockpit the size of a very small closet, endurance is just as important as firepower. For an F-16 pilot, survival in the cockpit doesn't just start a takeoff. It actually starts hours before the mission. What they eat on the ground is just as important as what they carry into the sky. Pilots stick to light, clean meals before every flight. Heavy or greasy food is a disaster waiting to happen in a cramped cockpit. Instead, it's lean protein, complex carbs, and plenty of hydration. Think chicken and rice, oatmeal, or a protein shake. Nothing that'll upset the stomach halfway through a mission. One pilot actually put it pretty simply, what I eat at breakfast decides how I feel six hours into the sortie. Caffeine is very carefully managed. A small amount before launch can sharpen focus, but too much risks dehydration and the inevitable crash later. Energy drinks? Forget it. A sugar high at takeoff followed by a crash during aerial refueling is the last thing a pilot needs. Once at the squadron, the pre-flight checklist isn't just weapons and avionics. Pilots literally check their snacks and hydration packs. Do they have enough bars? Is the water bladder full? Is there a spare piddle pack tucked in the survival vest? Small details, but on a 10-hour patrol, missing one could mean serious trouble. By the time the pilot straps in, their body is already tuned for endurance. The jet may carry missiles and bombs, but the pilot carries calories, hydration, and careful preparation. Because once those wheels leave the ground, every choice made earlier comes back into play. Let's step back from the F-16 cockpit just for a moment. And the contrast with other military platforms is striking. A B-2 bomber crew can heat up meals and stretch during a cruise. Air refueling tankers like the KC-135 or KC-46 have galley kitchens where crews rotate, eat, and even grab a short nap. Submariners dine in fully stocked mess halls with hot meals around the clock. F-16 pilots? They survive on energy bars and beef jerky stuffed into a flight suit pocket. No kitchen, no galley, no space, just improvisation at 30,000 feet. Long patrols, multiple refuels, constant radio chatter, and the stress of knowing that you're the tip of the spear. Unlike a bomber crew of two or a tanker crew of five, the F-16 pilot fights alone, making every decision with no backup in the seat beside or behind him. It's a reminder that technology only goes so far. The jet may be capable of endless flight with tanker support, but the pilot on the inside is human. The difference between success and failure often comes down to whether that human packed the right snacks, managed hydration, and kept their body in fighting condition. Fighter life isn't about comfort, it's about endurance. And in the most high-tech jet in the world of its time, sometimes survival depends on nothing more than a handful of trail mix and a sip of water. So, how do F-16 pilots eat during long combat missions? The answer is simple. Energy bars, jerky, nuts, water bladders, and a whole lot of discipline. No fancy meals, no comfort breaks, just survival at mock speed. Okay, now I want to hear from you. If you were locked in a cockpit for 10 hours, what snacks would you bring along? Drop it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hey, if you want to go a step further and support our channel directly, please 
join the fleet. You get loyalty badges, priority responses, and you help us bring more true maritime stories to the surface. Just click join on our channel page and get on board. Because nothing says fine dining like a little jerky at 30,000 feet. See you next time.